Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Atkinson, and we're here at Brookfield Zoo's Animal Hospital, where today we wanted to share with you a case in one of our white cheeked gibbons, Inda. Inda is a 28-year-old gibbon here at the zoo that uh, recently had some bleeding from her nose, and we got our hands on her for an examination a couple weeks ago to try and get a better understanding of what was going on and get some diagnostics. Part of our diagnostic approach to Inda included a CT scan, and uh, we do a lot of CT scanning here at the zoo, and we've shared many of those with you before in some of these videos, but what we've not really shared is where a lot of these images go after we acquire them for interpretation, and we're incredibly fortunate here at Brookfield Zoo to have Dr. Marina Evencheech on our staff. Marina is a uh, board-certified veterinary radiologist, meaning that she's got specialty training specifically in radiology. Marina is actually the only board-certified radiologist to be working at a zoo with a practice entirely focused on non-domestic animals. So we wanted to share with you a little bit of uh, Marina's approach to working through these images and the type of diagnostic information that we gain from these CT scans. Hi, I'm Dr. Marina. I'm a veterinary radiologist here at Brookfield Zoo, and I'm going to discuss a little bit more with you guys about Inda, our white cheeked gibbon, and her CT findings. So this is a photo of a couple of the white cheeked gibbons here at the zoo, and I wanted to set you up a little bit anatomically so you could understand what the images look like as they come across the computer screen. So um, they essentially are like, if you look at the the head of the animal, it would be like cutting little bread loaf slices sort of this way from front to back. And the pictures face you, so um, the right side of the animal's face is on the left side of the screen. So here, in this picture on the left, you can see her canine teeth on the top and her nose here. Um, and then as we scroll backwards through the images, you can see some of her other teeth. There's her tongue, uh, a tube that we use to help her breathe while she's asleep. And here you can see that there's an asymmetrical finding. So in the left side, this is her maxillary sinus and it's full of what we call soft tissue attenuating material when it should be air filled in black like this one on the right. So that was an abnormality that we were concerned about on her initial CAT scan. And so we wanted to know more information as to whether that is fluid that's sitting in that sinus, is that tissue or something potentially um, uh, aggressive that we need to be more concerned about. And really the best way to get information about what's happening in that area is to put a small needle um, into that space and to sample whether that's fluid or tissue. Okay, so here on the right side of the screen, we have a second CT scan that we performed as a recheck two weeks following the first one. You can see that there's actually soft tissue attenuating material in both sides now, whereas previously we only saw it in, in the left and not on the right. And because we saw it consistently again, we wanted to get a sample of the contents in that sinus. So what we did is we used CT guidance to place a needle directly into that sinus, which is the most precise way to do that sort of a procedure. Now you can see the needle directly going into that maxillary sinus, bypassing important structures like her eye, which is just above that. And then the tip of the needle is here, exactly within the place that we wanted it to be. So I was watching these images come across as Dr. Mike was placing the needle. We were able to then sample the contents, which came back as a thick sort of mucousy fluid that we could then submit to the laboratory for analysis, for culture, and then direct our antibiotic therapy appropriately so that she could heal quickly from this current illness. So as you can see, having Dr. Marina here on staff is just a really tremendous asset for the level of clinical care that we're able to provide for our animals. Being able to perform this type of procedure under CT guidance with Dr. Marina's input as we go really makes this a very safe procedure for our animals and gives us incredible diagnostic information that we can use to direct our treatments. In this case, we got a great bacterial culture from Inda that has allowed us to direct the appropriate antibiotic treatments and, and improve her condition. So please be sure to stop by Tropic World the next time you're here at the zoo and uh, make sure you say hi to Inda and uh, we hope to see you soon.